Hi, everybody. Welcome to our first ever virtual small fry school at the Alaska Sea Life Center. My name is Lindsay, and we are so happy to be able to do this. And thank you for joining us today. This is the first of five virtual small fry schools that we'll be doing. We'll be doing these every other Thursday at 11 a.m. right here on YouTube. Now, we couldn't have done these programs without the partnership of Alaska 529. Alaska 529 is an education savings program that's designed to help parents and loved ones save up for education nice and easy. If you guys are interested in learning more, be sure to check out alaska529plan.com. So since this is a children's program on YouTube, uh, there won't be any chat or comment section, but we'll certainly try to answer our, any questions that you may have during the program, hopefully. Um, we'll get to those. If not, we will show an uh, email address at the end that you can send questions to. Now, today we are in an area where you can see a lot of movement and hear a lot of sounds. This is known as our aviary, and this is a place where you can see birds. Our birds here are really special, though, because they are seabirds. One special group of seabirds we will be talking about today are called our alcids. So our alcids are really cool, and we are going to learn more about them. But first, I wanted to start off with a story. This story today is called The Angry Little Puffin, and it's written by Timothy Young. All right. Slow. Give me one second. Slow. Hear all those sounds, you guys? <laughs> okay. What's that? Some kind of penguin? Oh, it's a sweet little penguin. That's a funny looking penguin. Hey, what a kooky little penguin. I don't know about you guys, but it doesn't look very happy. If one more person calls me a penguin, I don't know what I'll do. Uh-oh. Look at that cute little penguin. Oh, he does not look happy. I can't take it. That's it. I can't take it anymore. All day long, I hear, look at that funny little penguin. And what a silly looking penguin. What do you guys think? Do you think he's very happy? I don't think so. Oh, no, he's not. I am not a penguin. I am a puffin, P-U-F-F-I-N. Puffins are definitely not penguins. He even has a sign to let you know. It's bad enough I have to live in the penguin house at the zoo and watch their lame-brained antics. People don't even read the sign on my window. They just assume I'm a penguin. I mean, there are so many differences. For one thing, penguins live in the Antarctic, near the very bottom of the Earth. All the way down there. Under where our puffins live. Puffins live on top of the world. We're polar opposites. He's all the way up there. Look at our penguins all the way down at the bottom. It makes me so mad that I could jump off a cliff. But if, do you know what would happen if I did? Do any of you know what would happen if our puffin friend jumped off this cliff? Let's find out. <gasps> I'd fly away. That's right, puffins can fly. Not like those dopey penguins who seem to have forgotten how. Why bother being a bird if you can't even fly? I think I would rather fly if I was a bird. I don't know about you guys, but I think I would.
I don't know why penguins get all the attention, toys, movies, television, even comic books. It's penguins, penguins, penguins. Come on, the puffin would be the coolest guy in any comic book. Look at all those cool things for penguins and the puffin doesn't even have anything. I think it would be pretty cool to have a puffin comic book, don't you? Oh, he's so upset. It's not fair. For once, I'd like someone to come up and say, look, it's a puffin. He's pacing around. He's really angry about this, everybody. Oh my goodness. Look, Daddy, it's a puffin. It's in complete shock. <gasps> She's got a lot to say. Puffins are my favorite. They're really neat, and they live in the Arctic Ocean. This one is an Atlantic puffin. He's also called a common puffin. I think he should be called a special puffin. Look how cute he is. There are other kinds too, like the tufted puffin and the horn puffin, but I like this one best. He eats fish and squid and sand deals and makes his home in the cliffs near the ocean. And you know what, Daddy? He can fly, unlike those penguins over there. So this is an Atlantic puffin, and here at the Sea Life Center, we have the tufted and the horn puffins. You'll get to meet some of those today. He's so sweet. I wish I could have a pet puffin. Aw, he's so happy. Wow, you sure know a lot about puffins. Let's go see if they have a toy puffin in the gift store. I wonder how that makes our puffin feel. Aw, he feels so great. Hey, what's that? Oh no, it's some kind of penguin, I guess. Well, he sure is a happy little penguin. And that's the end. So someone finally recognized that our puffin was a puffin and not a penguin. And that was sure a neat little book. Oftentimes our seabirds here at the Sea Life Center do get mistaken for penguins, but like the book mentioned, there aren't any penguins in Alaska. Instead of penguins, we have our puffins, like our tufted and our horn puffins. And our puffins have adaptations. Can you guys say that with me? Adaptations. Adaptations is a big word that just refers to things an animal has or does, and that allows them to live where they do. We also like to think of these adaptations like superpowers. Woo! And we have adaptations too, like our fingers and our thumbs. Can y'all give me a thumbs up? Excellent. Those are some of our adaptations. And we're gonna learn more about our puffins adaptations today. And to help me do that, I'd like to introduce my friend, Tuffy the Tufted Puffin. Hey Tuffy, how's it going? <laughs> awesome. So um, Tuffy will be with us for all of our virtual small fry school programs and is gonna help us learn more today. But as a tufted puffin, Tuffy sure does know a lot about those superpowers, right Tuffy? Awesome. So here in Alaska, it's really tough to live. It's, there's a lot of things that these seabirds or puffins need to survive, those adaptations. And you might notice, maybe as I was turning the pages, that my hands got a little red and I'm a little chilly. I've got lots of layers on. And Tuffy seems pretty unbothered, just like our other seabirds out here. So one of the adaptations that our seabirds have is something known as down feathers. That's D-O-W-N, like the opposite of up. Our down feathers are under their outside feathers, and they're really soft and Squishy. So these are able to trap air. I'll come up to the screen a little bit. I wish you guys could feel these. These are so soft and they can really fluff up because of all that air they can trap inside. That'll create a warm layer of air underneath them, sort of like when we wear a coat. And they can also compress nice and small. In order for them to fluff these up, they do something that a lot of us 
like to do, which is take a bath. So here's a tufted puffin out in our aviary that is fluffing up those down feathers underneath their body. That's gonna keep them nice and warm. So if you guys wanna practice at home, you can practice fluffing up your pretend down feathers too. And that's a great way um, for these guys to stay nice and warm. Now, Tuffy already has these nice down feathers and feathers, and I'm a little jealous. So I'm gonna make, try to make myself into a puffin too today. Is that okay? Awesome. So I'm gonna grab my feathers. Maybe they'll stay on, hopefully, with the wind. It is a little breezy out here, but I'm well on my way to becoming a puffin. Now, next up, they are out in the water a lot, and it's really important, another reason to stay warm, is they need to stay dry, and they need to keep those feathers dry. It's another seabird superpower or adaptation that our seabirds have is having something known as an oil gland. So an oil gland is near the base of their tail, and they're able to reach back with that big beak of theirs and grab some oil and run it through their feathers. And this is perfect for keeping them nice and dry in these chilly Alaskan waters. The water here is probably about 40 degrees, and I don't know about you, but I don't think I could dive right in without any of these adaptations. So Tuffy was doing a good job trying to reach around show off, but I also want some oil to protect my feathers. So let me grab, I'm well on my way to becoming a puffin. I'll put this right here. You approve? Perfect. Hopefully you guys approve as well. So they're always out in the water a lot of the times. You see them um, kind of floating out here above the water, but what our puffins also love to do is dive underwater and swim. And it looks a lot like flying. Here's one of our puffins flying underwater. And you see, it, they almost look like, they do look like a superhero with those bubbles trailing behind them. Those bubbles are the air that's being released from those down feathers. So when they come back up to the surface, they're gonna want to have to fluff those back up. So I hope you guys thought that was really cool. And one of the coolest things about our puffins that our penguins can't do is not only can they fly underwater, but they can fly in the sky too. And I'm about to show you a video. There's going to be two birds, one on the bottom and one on the top. You can pick which bird you want to be. And I want you to flap your wings at the same speed as the bird that is on the screen that you picked. Are you ready? Get those wings ready to go. I'm about to show. Okay, so keep up. Keep up, keep up. Good job, everybody. Flap those wings. Let's go one more time. Great job. Okay, so hopefully that was just a good warm up because believe it or not, as Puffy knows, that wasn't full speed. So we're going to have you guys get ready to flap those wings, choose the same bird that you did from the first video, and I'm gonna put that in real time. Get ready, set, go, fly, 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 fly. Great job, everybody. Fantastic. Hopefully you're getting your workout for the day. And whew, my wings are tired. I have mine right here that I tried to keep up with, but I don't know. I didn't do as well as Tuffy did. But our tufted puffins, our seabirds, they really do have to flap those wings nice and fast in order to stay in the air. Another thing that you might have noticed, especially while swimming, those um, puffins underwater, is they have really special feet. These are seabird superpower feet, and these are known 
as their webbed feet. So I tried to match a little bit with Tuffy today, but Tuffy has got these great um, webbed feet, and our puffins also have claws at the end of those that are going to help them dig into cliffs to make their burrows. And that's where they lay their eggs. So those webbed feet are great for swimming, paddling through the water and steering, and also digging into those cliffs. We'll show you a video of some of our tufted puffin friends here at the Sea Life Center taking some nesting materials into that burrow. They've got those bright orange feet and they're really placed back, far back behind their bodies. And that makes them look like they're waddling a little bit. As they come out of the burrow, you can really see how waddly they are. Waddle, waddle, waddle. Let's watch that one more time because I just love to watch our puffins waddle. Great job to our puffins. Okay, so I'm a little jealous. I wanted to get my waddle feet in. So Tuffy, can we waddle together? And if you are at home, waddle with us. Woo! You can also scrape your feet, dig those burrows. <laughs> Thank you. Perfect. <laughs> well done, everybody. I love it. So you can see that our puffins do have all these amazing adaptations. And we do get to see that in action every day here at the Sea Life Center. Let me kick off my webbed feet. And I want to show you something that we do here at the Sea Life Center to help care for our birds and our puffins, especially um, that we're talking about today, that helps them do, do all these cool behaviors. We do what is known as a broadcast feed. And here's a video of one of our husbands and staff, Sean, tossing some fish in the water for our puffins and their friends. They're able to dive underwater like you saw them do in that video and help them do their normal behaviors. Here's another video of Kristen doing another broadcast feed. And if you don't see it, if you see the birds going under the water, that's where they're diving. And if you guys know what our puffins really love to do at home, shout it out as loud as you can. Fish! Exactly! Our puffins love fish. Isn't that right? And Tuffy's showing us the sign for fish. Very cool. And our puffins do something known as fish stacking, where they can stack a lot of fish in their beaks in order to take it back to their burrow for their babies. Or just to hold on to as many fish as you want. Now, let's try to see how many fish Tuffy can hold in their mouths. I'll need you guys to count with me. Let's see. All right, ready, Tuffy? OK. One, two, do you think we can get three? We'll try. Three! Whoa, almost three! Those are big fish though, right, Tuffy? Nice and good salmon. Cool. Right. Well, thanks for counting with me, everybody. So our tufted puffins, they're able to dive for their food, but we also do something here known as a scale session. And this is something that our puffins and our other seabirds like to do. Um, basically, they get on a scale, and we can weigh them, find out how much they weigh, and we can keep track of their weights, sort of like if you went to the doctor and you got on a scale. So we'll show you a video of that. I know Tuffy is really good at scale sessions. Here's a video of a horn puffin that just hopped off the scale. Our tufted puffin is the one in all black. 
And as they get on that scale, they stay there for a little bit so we can get their weight. And then they are rewarded with a fish. Sometimes that fish will have a vitamin in that just to help keep them nice and healthy. And you'll notice that they gobble that right up. They swallow it whole. Wow, that was a big fish. Here's another point of view from our husbandry staff on the GoPro. Yeah, I know. He wouldn't take one from me earlier today. the front of the where they read the numbers off. And our puffins are really good at taking turns. Good boy! They like to take turns on the scale. And sometimes, that's a rhinoceros. That apple. one? He got a vitamin. Oh. <laughs> Hi, Trixie. Did she get a vitamin in? Yeah. Okay. Good, good. Snail stretching is so fun. Here's another one. Of another rhinoceros also, which is a relative to our puffins, picking up another fish. Our husband is doing the whole fish. And what's going to be a lot of time. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Tuffy, for showing us those amazing adaptations and those seabird superpowers. Um, we do have some time, and I wanted to zoom in on our aviary and just take some time to look and listen at some of the sounds that you see. So let's zoom on in here. And we can take a moment just to look and listen. How many birds can you count? What colors do you see? I see I see orange and greens and black and white, lots of cool colors. What sounds do you hear? You might have heard some really loud sounds just now. Oh. Right on cue, those were our red-legged kittiwakes. Can you at home make the same sounds as those birds? Or make any sounds that you hear? Great job. They are quite a noisy bird. Awesome. Well, great job, everybody. Thank you for observing with us in the aviary. It's so fun to observe and look at these birds. And we want to help you guys get outside and look for birds where you live. So we've created this activity called Bird Bingo. And this is gonna be a great way for you to get outside and find the types of birds you can see in your own backyard. Um, so Bird Bingo, this will be linked in the description on our YouTube video. We also have it up, we'll have it up on our website, but we have instructions up here. You can find an adult, someone to help you with this, and you'll grab maybe binoculars to help you zoom in really close at far away birds, or if you have eagle eyes, you can use those too. And we have some birds up here. You can go for a short walk and sit somewhere quiet and look and maybe even just listen for birds. So it's really good to be quiet so that they can come up to you and they won't be startled. As you see birds that you might find on our pictures here on our bingo page, you can mark it off, you can check it off, you can draw a smiley face, a star, whatever you want. And we even left a blank space for you to draw a bird that we may not have on the sheet. So if you see a different bird, feel free to add that to the free space and then see if you can get a bird bingo. Fantastic. All right. Well, once again, we want to thank you all so much for joining us today. Um, 
we want to invite you again for another virtual small fry school that will be on April 1st, so two Thursdays from now, and you're all invited. And feel free to invite your friends and family if you enjoyed this program. Now, if you have any questions that we didn't quite answer today, or if you want to know more about our puffing friends like Puffy, you can email at us at education at alaskaseelife.org. We'll also pull that up momentarily um, so you can see the, uh, see the email on the screen. And of course, thank you again for Alaska 529. But thanks again, guys, and we'll see you again real soon. Bye.